Mm. Kevin, uh, how would you explain your list of off-season priorities now that it's started? Well, first and foremost, here to meet you guys. That's uh, an important, uh, you know, step in the process here. The next, uh, you know, on the agenda will be meeting with the coaches on Monday. Um, we've got those uh, meetings uh, set up. I still have a few um, player interviews. Uh, we, we spread it out. A couple of guys gave them the option of coming in on Monday as well. So um, do that and, and uh, you know, then uh, meet with, uh, with ownership after that and, um, you know, begin those kind of conversations. How would you assess the season as a whole? Well, you know, again, you're ultimately there's there's going to be one team that that is going to be really satisfied with their season this year, and and um, you know that's the that's the hard part about sports is that uh, you know you um, you you want the opportunity to compete you know for the Stanley Cup, um, you have to earn that opportunity through a, a grueling 82 game you know schedule and and. Uh, standing here at training camp, you know, everyone asked if we were gonna, you know, be a playoff team. I firmly believe that we, you know, we had you know, what it took to be a, a playoff team, and um, I'm proud of the group that they, you know, battled through that gauntlet and, and got um, to the point of, of, of uh, you know, making the playoffs. Certainly, um, you know, to a man, you know, once you get there, it's not enough, and you want to, you know, continue um, moving forward. And um, there's there's eight teams. You know, in the next couple of days, there's going to be eight teams that, that um, you know, are going to be asking themselves, you know, what could have been. How important is it to get clarity on some of those core players who have expiring contracts in 2024 and also include <clears throat> Dubois, who is an RFA? Yeah, there's, there's lots of, uh, you know, different things that, that obviously are going to come into play this summer with respect to, you know, whether it's individuals or whether it's, um, you know, uh, collectively, you know, different things. But that's all part of the process here right now. It, it's, um, you know, everything is still pretty raw. Everything is still pretty fresh. We had um, what I thought were very productive, you know, exit meetings, like I say, with almost all the players um, uh, yesterday. Much different tone uh, yesterday than, you know, than a year ago at that time. Exit to exit was, um, you know, uh, I guess a question that we asked all the guys that were here in, in prior years. What, um, you know, what was the difference? And, and uh, you know, to a man, I think they, you know, they appreciated, um, you know, what the coaching staff brought to the table. And, and um, but more so, you know, they appreciated that opportunity to, to try and compete uh, and, and prove that they were a playoff team. And, and you know, that's, that's the nuances of sport. You know, you lose, uh, uh, you know, a Norris, you know, trophy candidate defenseman and Josh Morrissey on a, you know, just on a, on a simple play. You know, here's a guy who, you know, lays down blocks, shots, does all these things and, and, you know, ends up with a lower body injury just on a simple play. You know, Mark Shifley, um, you know, obviously just the freak, you know, freak injury with him going in on the breakaway. You know, what, what could have been, you know, such a, a momentous, you know, shift in, in, in a game, um, you know, turns into a, just, a, you know, a heartbreak with a couple shifts in. That's the playoffs. You know, that's, that's why you compete. That's why, you know, you never take anything for granted. And that's why you just never, um, you know, you just can't take it for granted. This sport provides you an opportunity to, um, uh, you know, to, 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 you know, entertain, but also to compete. And that's, that's what hockey players want to do. Hi, Kevin. With, with Rick, I mean, your, your options obviously are allow him to go in a year. <clears throat> to um, extend him or let him go? Have you, what can you say about that? Well, Rick, you know, Rick, Rick's contract is two and an option. Um, you know, when, when, we, when we talked, you know, last year, um, you know, th there's lots of things that went into, you know, those types of discussions. You know, first and foremost, you know, uh, you know the, the job that Rick did for us in, 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 in coming in and, and taking on this task and, um, and giving him a shot, you know, shot at, at trying to win a Stanley Cup, like I, I thought they did a great job. Not, not just Rick, I thought that, you know, the, the coaching staff, um, you know, you look at our penalty kill, we, we were in the top, obviously the power play, you know, uh, ebbed and flowed at, at different points in time that, um, you know, you, you maybe would like more consistency. But, but you know, those are things things that they uh, they instilled and and um, you know I think in Rick's situation he's more than comfortable you know uh, going into the season you know with with his contract as it is You're hanging on to him. yes okay. yesterday had five or six veteran players publicly saying they didn't like the way he handled uh, post game in Vegas um, this is a coach who was brought in to bring more accountability what's that say about the culture of this team well I, I think first you know you, you have to look at the context of, of where Rick was at. I think it was, um, uh, you know, if he could have chose some different words, I'm sure he would have. But I know in the second period, you know, he went into the dressing room there and, and he was not pleased with how things are going. One thing, 
you know, one thing that is, uh, you know, again, came as advertised and, and is as advertised is, is Bones, you know, held no punches to anybody. You know, it, it, it didn't matter who you were. He was just, you know, he was honest. And, um, you know, could he have chosen different words? You know, I, I'm sure, you know, he, you know, he mentioned it to you guys. He's mentioned it to us as well. Like, you know, sometimes, um, you know, in the heat of the moment, it, it's not like talking after game 65 or game 70. Um, you know, it's talking at the end of a series of, of an emotional time. You know, the, the, the emotion and investment that goes in from the player's standpoint is insurmountable. But the coach is, is, is equally. Um, you know, there, there's the, that drive and that passion. And, and Rick sat in on all the uh, exit meetings with all the players, uh, you know, yesterday. Um, you know, the conversations uh, were, were free-flowing. And, and um, you know, some of the guys, you know, we talked about, you know, those comments. And, and, um, and, and Rick addressed them. And, and um, you know, they, they left the meetings with saying, Rick said, Rick's basically saying, I'll call you in a couple of weeks, you know, and we'll go from there. Not one player stood up and said he was right. We or I played like crap. What does that say about leadership on this team? Well, you know, again, I think that the guys all all, all wear it. There's no question about it. I think that you know the um, uh, the opportunity that was in front of them, you know, certainly was was an emotional one. And um, you, you know, sometimes in game situations like that, things don't go your way. And and you know, if you knew why or knew how, and, and, you know, it would never, ever happen. But, you know, that's, that's the way it goes. I think, you know, you did, I think some of you guys asked, uh, you know, Kyle Connor a question about, you know, how he was in that game. And, and you know, he said he could be better. You know, like, I, I think to a man, everyone wants to be better. You know, you want to have found that, um, you know, that next gear. But, um, you know, there's a lot of good things that happened this, you know, this last year. Like, you don't go into games, you know, like the must-win games that, that we had, you know, in Nashville here in our building. And, you know, you, you come out on that side of it because, you know, you care. You come out that side of it because, you know, you, you earn that right. And those are the same players. You know, those are the same guys. And, and um, you know, there's 16 teams that, uh, you know, would have given anything to, to be in that same situation, you know, as us. And there's eight teams now that would give this, you know, next situation you know that opportunity we were on the other side a couple of years ago when we beat um you know edmonton it's it's uh you know overtime games uh emotion all those things every series is a is a, is a different animal last one for me so what's your top priority then you got two your top two centers need to be dealt with your uh, number one goalie and maybe your largest contract all pressing issues what's your priority well my priority is to uh, take a step back and assess everything that's my first priority um, you know we had conversations obviously uh, individually with with all the players and certainly those players um, you know involved I have not had any conversations with uh, you know any of their representatives yet all the guys you know they wanted to talk about the year they wanted to talk about the series they, they, they wanted to talk about um, you know uh, the the appreciation of of, um, of how good this group was together, how they they you know enjoyed that opportunity to play together and um, uh, and appreciated that you know again I think you know we stood here you know at the beginning of the season I think you know the, the, there was a couple of players that commented is that um, they relish the fact that you know they were kept together to try to get uh, to the playoffs and 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 that's what they accomplished so um, you know. We're not sitting here waving any banners or anything like that. That's unfortunate. But, you know, there, there's a lot of good people in that room that, that, that push this organization to a, to a good, par, uh, good place. Kevin, when you're going over that assessment, uh, in, in particular, uh, the, the core players who've been there since that 2018 Western Conference final against Vegas, uh, you are 0 for 5 in elimination games with that group. And, and in non-COVID or pandemic scenarios, you've lost seven in a row on home ice. How much will that factor in the overall assessment, aside from what happened just this year and, and with the injuries in this series? Well, again, you can take a collective look on a lot of things, but, you know, every team is different. Every series, uh, you know, is, uh, is a different thing. Um, you know, ultimately, you're, you're, you're going to end up with losses if you're not the Stanley Cup champion. But, you know, again, um, y you know, that core got us to five of, of six, in, uh, you know, playoffs as well. You know, that, that can't be, you know, lost. I don't know that there's uh, a lot of teams in Canada that, that you know, ha have played that many games, um, you know, in the playoffs over that course of time. Um, you know, it'd be interesting to, to look and see. But, um, you know, you, you play the sport uh, to, you know, to, to have that opportunity to get into the playoffs. And, that, and that's what that core did, you know, more times than not. Um, 
but you know, again, that, that, that is part of the process, you know, in, in, in the business side of it does come into play. The contractual side of it, you know, does come into play. And, um, but that's where, you know, you got to have these meetings. You got to, you know, uh, listen to the players, listen to what they're saying. And, and, you know, we had that opportunity yesterday, um, you know, debrief with the coaches, get their, you know, their, their true and honest assessments of, of their job and what they did and, and what they felt. And then, um, you know, sit with your management team and, and, and talk to ownership as well. And one final one for me. Aside from an outright extension for Pierre-Luc Dubois, what kind of things would you have to see or, or be in complete confidence of to go into July the 1st or beyond without a deal in place for him? You know, I'm not going to get into individual, um, you know, situations or circumstances with any of the players. I, I don't think that's productive. Um, you know, certainly a, a couple of days after the, the raw emotion of, of a game, uh, I, I've got emotions as well too. You know, it's it's uh, it's it's one of those things where you know I have to process you know my own emotion as well and 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 um, make sure that if I am making the decisions, I'm making them. Uh, rationally and, and not, you know, from a knee-jerk type of, uh, of situation. So, um, you know, the, the business side takes care of itself, and, and, um, but for, from, from a perspective of, of uh, you know, concrete plans and stuff like that, it's really not the time for me to get into. Kevin, we keep hearing about the playoff track record and, and, you know, from the players to you now. The fact of the matter is it's been 12 seasons and you've won three playoff uh, uh, rounds. It just seems like guys are satisfied with the status quo. No one's really holding anyone accountable. No one's necessarily saying we need to be better. People even think that they should have had a better fate against Vegas. It just doesn't seem to be a lot of looking inside. You've been a cap team. You've spent to the cap for years now. Like, can we just get an understanding of what the standard is and if you guys have even reached close to what your expectations were at this point? Well, again, you, you go into every season uh, wanting to be a Stanley Cup champion. It doesn't uh, necessarily work out for, you know, all the teams, but 20, you know, for 29 of them, it works out for one of them. But, um, you know, I, I think what you want is, is uh, you know, in this age of, of parity in the National Hockey League, uh, you know, and the cap and, and the cap being flat for the last, you know, couple of years, um, you know, you, you have to manage accordingly. Like, you know, you'd like to keep everybody in, in, in that perfect world. There's lots of guys that have left our organization that, you know, if we were able to keep them, you know, from a cap perspective, uh, you know, again, I think that, you know, you'd love to build that dream team, so to speak, that that can, you know, take you to to different areas. But, um, you know, as you're seeing in these playoffs, like, you know, the the you can finish first overall, and, and you can be playing a game seven in in, in the first round. It, it's a tough league to win in, and um, you know, the the you have to try and approach. Uh, each and every year with, you know, making sure you've got what it takes to give yourself that opportunity. And um, there, there's lots of things that go into it along the way. Like, uh, you know, again, you know, Bones was really good this year at, at never using, you know, um, injuries as an excuse. He didn't even use them, you know, as an excuse, uh, you know, in the playoffs. Like, but there, there's a reality. When you lose a 40-goal scorer, you know, and, and you lose, a, you know, a, a top defenseman, there's, you know, the game is going to change the way you approach it, the way you do it. You know, Mark Shifley has had an unfortunate, you know, run of luck when it comes to, you know, the, the different years of the playoffs. And, and um, you know, we, we, we beat Edmonton and, and we actually go into, uh, you know, the, the Montreal series less healthy than when we ended it with, you know, Paul Stastny having a back injury, you know, with the, with the time off. So these are things that you don't, uh, you can't control and, you know, you, you have to, you know, uh, be prepared and, and roll with. Um, and, uh, you know, again, uh, getting an opportunity to, 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 to play for the Stanley Cup is the most important thing. Once you get there, obviously, you, you have to do some special things. You noted the improvements from last year to this season. I think it was fair to say last year didn't go as planned. A lot of guys talked about the culture in the room, the accountability, all that stuff. There was a new thing signed, pledge signed this year. You know, but players, I mean, Rick, you mentioned Rick. I mean, he was very blunt in his assessments throughout the year about guys not giving it their all, about having to get more from the better players. It seemed like a lot of those habits started to creep in. Players talk privately about players choosing who they played with and, and, and those kind of things, stuff that they hadn't seen in other markets. I'm wondering how in tune are you with the, the locker room? And, and really, as a broader question, how coachable is this team when you look at the last 
year and a half and you have three separate coaches and it seems to be a rebellion against each of them. Well, I, I guess I would disagree with you with respect to the rebellion, you know, against, uh, against Bones. It's, uh, you know, Bones was, you know, very, very candid. And, and you know, I've never, ever take that passion away from, from Bones because, um, you know, again, I, I do think that, the, you know, a couple of, uh, you know, ill-used words, you know, doesn't define what went on this year and, and shouldn't define what went on this year. And, and, and I think, you know, I, I think, you know, maybe you guys are underestimating just how hard it is to make the playoffs. And, and just how hard it is, you know, to, to, you know, to, 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 to build a, a group of professional athletes that, that obviously all have talent, all have, um, you know, throughout the course of their career, different successes at, at different things. And, and I think it just really underscores, you know, the, 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 the job that, that Bones and, and his group came in this year, um, you know, to, to get that. Our, our exit meetings last year, I think we started at 9 in the morning and we finished at 7, uh, you know, at night. You know, yesterday we were done at three. You know, like there was the, the, the tone, you know, the appreciation for the accountability that, that, that Bones brought in for the, the amount of learning, I think, that a lot of, a lot of players, both young and, you know, and, and veteran guys, um, you know, learn from an experience, you know, like, um, you know, Scott Arneal coming from, you know, the Washington situation and the Rangers and, you know, Brad Lauer, you know, with his experiences in, in Tampa and, and different things like that. There was a lot of behind-the-scenes things that, that, that really helped push this, uh, this organization forward. Elliot Friedman said on, on the panel yesterday um, that there was a full expectation that you were going to be back, that you're, that you're the GM of this team. Knowing how calculated this organization is with information, we, I'm assuming we are led to believe that's the case. If, if what looks to be a very significant offseason here, maybe even the, the likelihood of players moving on, I, I guess the question is, how do you justify you being the right person to sit, to put this team into into the future here after getting 12 years already to do so well i think you you know again it's, it's it's i'm not i guess coming up here to justify my job it's it's uh um, i have the the pleasure and, and the privilege of, of 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 having one of the 32 general manager jobs in the national hockey league and you don't take that uh lightly um and I have the distinct honor of, of having it in one of the most passionate markets, um, you know, in, in the league where, you know, the, the game means so much, you know, to the people of Winnipeg and the province of Manitoba. Um, so, th so those are things that I don't take lightly. But I think if you, you know, you, you, you come into a season, I think, you know, I, I don't really read all the articles, but I'm not sure who predicted we were making the playoffs this year. But um, there we go. They're a very astute man back there. But... Um, uh, you know, we, we, we've provided an opportunity for this team to, 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 to have a level of competition to, to, to be in the conversation of, of making the playoffs and, and moving forward, um, you know, over the course of time. We've been able to, you know, draft and, and develop and retain, um, you know, many players when, you know, when uh, you know, and developing the core. We can talk about the core and, you know, maybe they didn't get it done or different things like that this year, but we developed that core. We, we drafted it. We signed it. We kept it, um, and you know, again, we you know, five or six years, we got an opportunity to uh, you know to play for uh, for the cup. Um, there's a lot of tough decisions to be made, and, and you know, we have to, we always have to make tough decisions. I sat there last year with an extremely tough decision in Andrew Kopp, and um, you know, we, we we ultimately made the choice of, of of doing what we did, and you know, that choice has turned on to you know Morgan Barron, who is uh, you know again a, a, an up and coming player in our organization that's only going to get better. Uh, Elias Salmonson, who's uh, you know uh, playing in the Swedish uh, Swedish Hockey League this year, and, and by all accounts is a you know a really good player coming up, and Brad Lambert, and you know who's having just a, a monster year in, in junior, where you know again that's the that's the exciting part with some of those decisions. So we have lots of decisions to make, and I'm just thankful I'm the guy. Kevin, yeah, how would you sell hope right now to fans who look at? the team and, and you know going back to Paul's question potentially losing the top two centers on this team potentially losing the, the you know the Vesna goalie how, how do you how do you tell fans that this team is actually going to be better next season that they're going well, to make the playoffs you know I, I, I don't know that we're losing those guys I don't know that that's the you know uh, the, the directions uh, those are the part of the processes that you know have to take place uh, you know over the period of time I think that you know the fans you know definitely appreciate that fact that you know decisions aren't made just by knee jerk they're not made just by you know overreaction I think you know that, that's that's what the you know fans have, have come to expect and um, you know that's that's what they're going to get and, and you know moving forward um, you know those decisions are going to have purpose and and, uh, and, and you know it's, it's 
it's a challenge. Sure. Um, did you expect, Martin, just going back to Paul's question, did you expect, you know, it, it's words, it's one word that Rick Bonus used yesterday that, or on after game five that, you know, he said he would take back. But they're just words, and, and you know, the players are upset about them. But it didn't seem like any of the players really took that kind of on themselves. It was almost like, you know, they almost had an out to the way that they played because of the fact that a certain word or a way that it was going. You know, is that not an issue in terms of how this this team kind of handles its its own adversity, whether in season, at the end of the season, whenever? Yeah, they're you know again they they may not have outwardly you know expressed you know all the the different feelings and emotions that that they were having, but you know I internally some of those conversations uh, you know again. Um, they're pretty honest, you know, they're pretty honest with, you know, each other and they're pretty honest with themselves. That was part of, I think, the difference this year uh, versus, you know, years past is that, um, you know, we, we, we created a culture where more people, you know, could be honest. We created a culture, um, you know, where we, you know, we sat down at the beginning of the year and said, you know, it's okay to have tough conversations with each other that, you know, again, might not like it, but, you know, we're going to have them and, and we're going to walk away and, and we're going to, you know, grow from it. So those kind of conversations happened, you know, behind the scenes. And I think it helped them to uh, understand each other better and, and certainly, uh, you know, grow with each other. And, you know, again, um, th th they know they're the ones that play the game. You know, they're, they're you know, uh, again, they, trust me, they wanted to play more games than, than anybody else, uh, you know, as passionate as fans are, like, these guys are driven to try to win a cup. The team started um, a season ticket drive just a few weeks ago, and a, a lot of those passionate fans you're talking about say they want to see change and, and big improvement before they spend their money. I mean, how aware are you about how important what you do in, in the next few months might affect that bottom line? Well, I live in this community, you know, year round. I, I'm part of it. Uh, I, I buy my groceries, you know, with, with all those people. I, I, I get my gas and we have those conversations. I got, you know, friends at the coffee shop that, that chirp me every day. You know, those are the kind of things that, that, that make Winnipeg just a very, you know, unique place and, and make you, you know, want to care for it. And I think that, you know, the fans, you know, want to make sure that whatever decisions are made are made with a purpose. They're not made just to, to have a knee jerk reaction. They're not made to create headlines. They're not made for Twitter clicks. You know, they're, they're made, um, you know, for, for a purpose and they're made to, uh, you know, uh, a, a common goal. And, you know, what some of those decisions are yet, um, again, I think, you know, the fans appreciate the fact that, you know, they're going to be, you know, made with, with thoughtful in mind. Kevin, <clears throat> you, uh, you mentioned Andrew Kopp. You went into Andrew Kopp's final contracted year, um, and you started the year, obviously, with him on the roster and then moved him at the deadline. How comfortable would you be with Mark Shifley, Connor Hellebuck, and potentially Pierre-Luc Dubois to start the season with them on your roster, knowing that they would be potential UFAs in the summer of 2024. Yeah, again, it's, it's hard to get into the specifics here right now. Every situation, you know, is different. I think that, you know, you look at the uh, uh, situation that, you know, that was at hand last in, in that decision, and that's the, the choice that we made. And um, you have to be comfortable going in, in multiple different directions if that's what you feel is, is correct. So that's what we'll take the time to do, and, and, and we'll make those assessments and, and uh, plan accordingly. Feels like part of the frustration maybe in this market is in the NHL, it seems like sort of being in that mushy middle is not a great place to be. Um, you sort of end up spinning your wheels a bit, right? Where you're always fighting to sneak into the playoffs, but maybe, you know, having a tough time making a lot of noise, but you're also not near the bottom of the pack, so you're not getting a really high draft pick. And in a year like this, maybe that's magnified with with the draft crop. So how do you get out of that cycle to either be really, really good or potentially really, really bad that can allow you to be really, really good? Well, you know, I, I think you have to be careful with, um, you know, w with the, the term just, you know, sneaking into the playoffs and stuff like that because, uh, you know, I know the, the year with the Blackhawks there, we played um, uh, played Philly in the finals. They they got in because of a shootout loss, I believe, by another team, and, and that's how they got in, ran it right to the finals. You know, L.A. winning the Cup as, as the eighth seed. Like, um, there's different things that go on through a season that, you know, sometimes dictate where you finish, how you finish, um, you know, the different runs that you go on. 
um, get hot at the right time, get cold at the wrong time. They're, they're, those are things that define the the, uh, the marathon of the 82 games. And, um, you know, again, we're talking, you know, at, at different points in time and everyone's, you know, everyone wants to say, well, are you going to guarantee you're going to make the playoffs? That, that, you know, that's the first question out of, of everyone's mouth at the beginning of the season. And, um, you know, th there's no guarantees. You, you have to earn it. So I, I think, um, you know, that mushy middle, you know, can, can be a, a, a term that certainly, you know, can apply to a lot of different situations. But, um, you know, I really believed we, you know, we had a team this year that, that, that could have made some noise. You know, again, not going to make any excuses, but, um, you know, there, there are unfortunate things that, that happen in the series too. And I thought we played fantastic in game one. And I think it showed. I think, you know, the first period in game two was, you know, was, was uh, you know, right on script. And, you know, unfortunately in that game, you know, we don't score on that four on three. And if we score on that four on three, you know, maybe things are a little bit different, you know, then you, you know, you come into game, you know, game three and, and it's a double overtime game. You know, PL hits the post, you know, he doesn't hit that post. That's an emotional game. That's an emotional lift. Like, but that's the, that's the juice, eh? That's what drives you, you know, in the playoffs. That's what, you know, gets you so excited. That's what gets you so emotional. And, and, and I think the higher the emotions, the greater, the, you know, the feeling, you know, when, when you don't achieve it. And, and that's, you, you saw that emotion on, on, on Bones' of sleeves. And, and, you know, that's, that's the raw emotion that, you know, again, you know, that the players internally had as well. Last one for me. Um, we've seen a lot of teams, including Canadian teams, add uh, a director of hockey operations, a president of hockey operations, different titles, but an another layer of scrutiny or whatever. That, that isn't the case here in Winnipeg. Um, is that something that could be of value to this organization? Is that a direction that you could see this organization going? And if not, maybe explain why. Well, you know, again, I think that's a, you know, a, a question that is, you know, not really for me, so to speak, like, uh, um, but I do relish the fact that, uh, you know, as, as an organization, we, we run a really tight ship. I think that, you know, you look at our, our record, uh, with respect to drafting and you look at our record with respect to, you know, being able to trade, um, some of the contracts that, uh, you know, we've been able to sign, you know, for, for different terms and stuff like that. The fact that, um, you know, those things come into play. I, I do think that, you know, again, uh, the track record of, of this group is good, and uh, I'm, I'm real comfortable with it. Kevin, uh, you and your players have both said that you're not interested in triggering or being a part of a rebuild. So in the backdrop of the players that will potentially come due or will come due in 2024, what do you need to do this summer to ensure that this, the team avoids or doesn't organically slip into a rebuild? Well, you know, again, I, th I think we're, we're not at that point here yet to make any bold proclamations. There's, there's lots of conversations that, uh, you know, that I have to have, you know, like, you know, sitting in the room talking to some of those players, you know, the, there's still raw emotion. They're not wanting to talk contract. They're not wanting to talk extensions. Those are things that they said, you know, like, look, like, give, give us some time to process. We'll, you know, talk to our agents. We'll, we'll have those conversations. That's, that's what, the, you know, the course of time the summer is. That's part of the taking a step back and evaluating and, 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 understanding what what is in front of you you know we still have to get those um those conversations those have to happen with whether it's the individual players or whether it's the players representatives um you know before we can really start mapping out you know the the, the greater plan so there's you know you're not seeing any bold proclamations coming out of here until we you know have that opportunity to process everything okay um you made a significant change to your leadership core at the start of the season so yeah. Now that the season's in the books and the results are as well, what is your assessment of your leadership group, especially uh, in the context of that, again, some of these players yeah. do next season, you're going to have to make decisions on and that this season was ultimately, the result was not ultimately what you wanted or expected. Yeah, no, and, and I thought that, um, you know, I, I thought we accomplished what, what uh, we had talked about at the beginning of the year. We wanted, uh, you know, the, the ability for some of the, you know, other players to have to bear the responsibility of, of that leadership, to, ha to have to, um, you know, not just be Blake Wheeler, come up and, and, and stand here and, and take the questions on a nightly basis, um, you know, when things don't go right. And, and you know, and, and, um, you know, which, you know, he's done admirably and did a fantastic job. But, you know, so it allowed, uh, it allowed the group uh, to, to expand and uh, it allowed everyone to take more ownership. Um, and, but, but, 
you know, make no mistake, like Blake, you know, just because he didn't have a C, you know, his level of leadership and his level of caring, you know, and, and he said it, I think, at the beginning of the year, that, that, that's not going to change. That didn't go away. Um, you know, again, it, it, it spread that responsibility. And I, and I think, you know, it, it helped, you know, players grow because, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy, you know, for, for players sometimes to, to naturally, um, you know, uh, have to evolve as a leader. And, and, and I think that's what helped make this group so tight and, um, you know, uh, the care about each other so much. Kevin, you've been receiving questions about sort of what your standards or hopes or expectations are. And, um, you know, you, you note five out of six playoff um, appearances, which means that you count the qualification round. I mean, you could quibble and say it was four. You asked about stats, about playoff wins. Uh, Winnipeg's 25th of 32 since 2011, 2012 in terms of playoff games won. Um, and I'm wondering then, you know, you, you got questions about are the standards high enough? We don't hear your players say they need to be better. We're not hearing you say you need to be better either. There's none of that, I don't think. I don't think, you know, again, it's, it's it, you know, you can sit here and, and, and say those things, but you, you have to, <clears throat> you know, you have to find those ways. And, and the players sat there last year and said, you know, we, we're not happy that we didn't make the playoffs. And, and you know, so they found, a, they found a way. They ground their way, you know, into the playoffs this year where everyone said, you know, get rid of this guy, get rid of that guy. You know, you, you got no chance. Um, but they proved they had a chance. So, um, you know, again, and I, and I think, you know, you want to go back to, you know, since, we've, since we moved here, I think that, um, you know, part of the evaluation process, you know, did go in different stages. You know, and, and we made the playoffs the one year there and lost four straight to Anaheim. But we knew at that point in time then that, you know that core was not going to be able to to be a core that could win uh, and give a chance to uh, to, to, to uh, earn the right to get to the playoffs on on a regular basis. Um, so we stepped back and we we, we waited a little bit and, and we bought some time and and um, you know we, we had some younger players that were in the queue or in the uh, in that process that were were, were able to. Uh, um, to start contributing, and I think you know it was that process that allowed us to have a core of guys in, in 17, 18, um, where we had a veteran presence and we had a, a bunch of young guys, you know, in that right uh, entry level mix. And, and, and you know, we took a real run at it. We traded a lot of draft picks over the years. Um, you know, there, there's lots of different you know things, but those are past things. Now we have to deal with, you know, with, with what's here right now. We've got a, a cap that's going to go up by a million dollars. Those are some of the things that you, you know, you have to factor into different equations as well. Um, but again, it, it's, it's all going to be part of that process of evaluation and, and, and choosing which directions to go. I can follow the plot that you've laid out, like the building phase, the 2015, and then since that 2017-18, there was this real sense of, you know, spend assets, go for it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that all of looking back, I mean, there's one playoff series win since that time, but also I think that the plot that you give makes some sense to me. Um, well, we went to the conference finals, I mean, and then we me. beat Edmonton four straight. I, I, I think that, you know, again, it's... It, it, it's it's you know this core that we talk about here right now has had you know some some good success. Granted, we haven't won the championship, but you know again, um, th th these these are things that you know again you 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 try to aspire to do, and and sometimes you you know you fall short, and and um, but again it shouldn't diminish you know the, the good things that 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 you try to uh, try to accomplish. Yeah, I didn't mean to paper over well, 2018 in that way. That wasn't don't let what the facts stand in the way of a good do. story. Yeah. My my question then at this stage it's it's a little bit tougher to see to see the plot and you know there are fans in our you know interactions every day wondering if now it's about optimizing for make the playoffs aim for the gate revenue and hope as opposed to those times where we could look at you guys as front runners or builders or you know have a clearer sense of what you were yeah I saw. I saw a lot of people out in the streets uh, a couple of days ago wearing white, and I saw a lot of people in the stands a couple of days ago wearing white that were pretty pretty jacked up that, you know, we, we had an opportunity to get in there. I think that's what, you know, that's certainly energized, you know, the fans, and, and, um, and I hope they enjoyed that because it was, it was an opportunity that, that was earned by the players and, and um, you know, and, and, the, and the coaching staff and, and you know, the, the fact that uh, we kept a lot of those guys together. So what decisions we make moving forward are, are going to be based on, um, you know, many different circumstances. But, you know, I, I, I hope and I do think that the fans appreciated that they, they had a chance to go in those stands and, and you know, coming out of a pandemic and, and cheering for a team that, uh, um, you know, that, that's theirs. 
is also uh, about the fans. One of the things that I would have seen a lot of following the trade deadline press conference was a bit of reaction to you um, mentioning, hey, this isn't fantasy hockey. And in the time since then, I mean, injuries hurt hard. There weren't, you know, backups necessarily to that. I'm, forget my editorializing. But do you, do you regret that type of phrasing, you know, to, to tell fans when you were asked, um, what give what should give you belief, or why didn't you do more in your response? Was hey guys, this isn't fantasy hockey. Well, I, you know, again, I think we were linked to probably every single player that was out there, you know, in the in the trade deadline, you know, and you know, you, you can't be linked to everybody, you know, in reality. One, you don't have the assets, um, you know, you don't have uh, you know, the the ability to, to to grab every single player that we were linked, uh, you know, to, and for various different reasons, you know, some of those were real and some of those weren't. Um, you know, so that's that, that's where it comes to. I, I you know, I, I thought that Vladdy, you know, came in and, and you know was was true to form. Like he he was like a Swiss Army knife for us, playing a lot of center. Um, you know, gave uh, gave Bones an option to uh, you know to, to do things on a different uh, different line uh, combinations. Uh, you know, I thought Nino was you know, was, uh, was and is, you know, a big part of it. I think that, you know, his playoff experience as, as well was, was helpful, um, you know, with respect to, uh, you know, his knowledge and, 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 and his experience in, in different teams and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I, I thought our additions, you know, fit what we needed. Certainly, um, you know, again, you, you can't plan for injuries. And, uh, but, you know, what we did have is I thought we did have good depth, uh, you know, on, on the bottom six as far as uh, throughout the year. I think that we... We recreated our fourth line to a point where you know Bones uh, you know felt very comfortable you know using him in, in many different situations um, you know and and, uh, and again those are things that you know you uh, you know you build through the course of the year and, and you know you, you tweak at the deadline not every acquisition has worked you know for for every single team um, you know there's there's going to be a couple of teams that that spent first round assets that uh, you know. There's a couple that are out, and there's a couple that are, uh, you know, potentially out here in, in the next couple of days. So there's no guarantees in in, uh, in this game. You're. Oh, I've got a couple. Scott. Your players publicly uniting in opposition to their coach, who for the most part this. Sorry, I. I I'll let you finish. Sure. Um, publicly uniting in opposition to the, your coach's comments, yeah. uh, comments we heard throughout the back half of the season in which it seemed like he was searching for accountability from his players. Them doing that, is that healthy? Well, you know, again, I, I think that, you know, those comments, is, again, um, I, I know that Bone spoke to them in the second period and, and, and you know, talked about, you know, the, the standard that, you know, he wanted, uh, you know, in that game. I think that those comments, uh, Again, need to be looked in, in context as to you know I think Bones was, was 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 specifically referencing that game, which wasn't up to his standard, and and he has to let those guys know. And I think each and every time, one thing I know for sure is that you know when when Bones you know said something to me like I'm going to meet with so and so, or I'm going to show so and so this, or I'm going to you know talk to someone. That, it happened. It happened fast too. Like it, there was there there's not a there's not a time frame where Bones you know kind of. Well, maybe I should, or maybe I shouldn't, and I think the players appreciated that. Did they? Did they not like, um, you know, the, the, those words and those comments? Yeah, you know, yes, you know, and, and we talked about that in the exit meetings, and like I said, Bones was in the exit meetings as well. So, um, you know, th those things have been talked about, and and um, you know, uh, again. He's a passionate guy, and they're passionate players. I think last year's exit meetings, you know, showed a lot of the, you know, the the the, the passion that they had in in in, in various different ways. Um, you know, this year, you know, the passion was, um, you know, we we appreciated this opportunity, and and it it it, it hurts that we can't move forward. Um, he he scaled back on some of his comments, said he went a little bit too far, but he stuck by the idea that he wants to remain truthful and stuck by the idea he didn't believe that there was enough pushback from this team, and that's something he said went back to January when this team was in first and things fell off. Do you back your coach's assessment that there was not enough pushback or pride from their play from his players? Well, I don't think pride. I think that uh, you know there was lots of pride in that room, and I think that uh, you know again. Um, you know the the pushback. There's there's different you know f forms of it as well. You know I think that um, you know again it would be easy for us to say that we didn't push back. Uh, you know and, and and get into the playoffs. We had to play some real tough games. You know over the course of time, it'd be easy for you know for everyone to say, well you know um, we had I think five four or five of our top six players out and and. Um, 
uh, you know, we, we just let it slide. We didn't. There was pushback there. But, you know, as a coach and, uh, you know, as a coach like Bones, like you're, you're always pushing. You know, you're, you're never satisfied. You're, you're always pushing it to the next level. So you're always challenging, you know, players and, and individuals, you know, to be better. Um, and, and, and that's a hard thing, you know, on a, on a regular basis. But, you know, again, Bones pushed, those players reacted. We made the playoffs. Unfortunately, we didn't get the, you know, the ultimate job done. Just a clarif clarification uh, on a question you answered before. Uh, your players made it absolutely clear yesterday they're not interested in a rebuild. Uh, it's been reported the organization feels the same way. What is your appetite for a rebuild? Well, again, I'm, I'm not really standing here making any proclamations at this point because there's, there's, there's lots, of, uh, lots of discussions that have to happen. I think that's, I've been consistent in, in, in that you know, comment here. There's, um, you know, there's realities that we have to address. There's, there's contracts we have to address. There's, uh, you know, various different things that, that'll come from coaches meetings, ownership meetings, um, you know, and, and again, we'll, we'll go through the process and, and we'll make those proper decisions. I guess just the final one for me. I, I know that you, you're, you, you appreciate some of the things that your team has accomplished. They clearly like being around each other. They've said that. Um, and you have to take and you have to weigh that and decide what to do. But from what you've seen over this team over the years, is there change that is required to get them over the hump? It sounds like there's belief in this team and belief that things could have gone a different way. But is there a belief that there's change required in order to get a different outcome? Well, we're going to look at you know all those things, and, and and if there's an opportunity to make a change that makes our organization better, that pushes us in that direction, you know we're we're going to evaluate it. If if you know we look at the the, the situation and, and we choose to go a different direction, you know again those are things that you know you, you have to see you know what's what's uh, what's available to you and and what your you know your options and your decisions are, and and um, you know those. Those things don't happen 48, 72 hours after, um, you know, after you're talking about a, a tough loss. Kevin, just a quick one. Looking ahead to next summer, or the next season, sorry, 2021 second rounder Nikita Chibrikov is in town. Uh, yeah. He was at the Moose game on Friday. What is the plan? I believe today is the last day of his KHL contract, so he can be signed tomorrow. So what is the plan for him? Yeah, so it, uh, it's, it's really exciting, actually, to, uh, to have that opportunity uh, for him to get here. And, and uh, you know, Nikita is, uh, you know, an exciting young player. I think that, um, you know, is, you know, the fans are actually going to be, you know, uh, really pleased with here once he gets acclimated to, to North America. Um, you know, we'll, we'll go through that process, obviously, with uh, a player coming from the KHL. It's a little bit different than just a player from, uh, you know, from junior or college. And, and um, you know, we'll, we'll take those steps to make sure that uh, uh, the process is um, uh, completed properly so that there's, there's no hiccups or anything like that. Uh, obviously, visas and, and different things come into play as well. So, um, but it's exciting to, you know, to, to have him. He, he made that commitment, uh, you know, to us when we drafted him that he was going to, um, you know, not sign a contract over there because he, he, he wants to play in the National Hockey League. And uh, we're excited to, to have him, uh, you know, as, as part of our, you know, young group of players that, um, you know, are, are, are going to you know, grow and, and, and contribute to this organization. Thanks very much.